All right. Welcome, everyone. My name is Deb Clemens. I'm your superintendent. Thank you for joining the superintendent's Lunch and Learn. Our topic today is the 2024 levies proposed for board approval at next Tuesday's board meeting. This is the first of two Lunch and Learns that we conduct every school year. And I'm going to begin the presentation by sharing information about two proposed ballot measures. Throughout the presentation, you should have access to a Q&A box. And if you've participated in Lunch and Learns in the, in the past, like last spring, we had one all around school construction and, and capital funding. Um, you can enter your questions in the Q&A box. And at the conclusion of the presentation, Amy Blondin, our Executive Director of Communications, will, will step in as a moderator. And we have other panelists, our Assistant Soup of Operations, Troy Oliver, and our um, Director of Finance, um, Heather Larson, will be joining me to answer the questions that you pose. Um, as well as frequently asked questions that we often receive uh, around uh, school funding measures. So as you are probably very aware, our, our mission is committed to excellence, preparing all students for rewarding careers, fulfilling lives, and compassionate global citizenship. And we're really pleased to share once again that our four-year graduation rates are consistently above the state average. So if you're new to our district, um, just a few uh, by the numbers information, we have over 14,000 students. We have over 2,100 employees, 13 elementary schools, four middle schools, three comprehensive high schools, and four choice schools. Three of those schools have opened in the last few years in response to family requests. So we now have Ignite Family Academy, a parent partnership program, Summit Virtual Academy, a virtual school, and Envision Career Academy. NTPS is known for nurturing strong partnerships with our community residents, businesses, and nonprofit entities. Students benefit from community engagement. And just a few examples, Helping Hands is our partner program for working, partnering a school with a nonprofit organization. Partners in Education is partnering schools with businesses, and we also have district partners. I think Twin Star is one of our district partners, just as an example. And um, our Lunch Buddy program, relatively new, it matches adults to elementary, middle school students for weekly meetings and just build a friendship, play games, and do activities together. We really appreciate our volunteers. We love our volunteers. Last year, volunteers gave more than 30,000 hours of time to our schools. And all volunteers, of course, go through a background check and provide a variety of support to schools. Finally, North Thurston is in its seventh year of partnering with the City of Lacey and the Lacey South Sound Chamber on a Compassionate Community Project. And this year, our partnership is around um, really embracing and celebrating a culture of kindness. So in partnership with the city and the chamber, we are uh, set a bold goal of documenting 100,000 acts of kindness during the upcoming school year. And all of our schools and departments and community are participating. You can um, join us by sharing your acts of kindness on our website. It's really um, an opportunity to cele celebrate kindness and create a district culture where everyone belongs and feels safe. So now to the primary focus of our time together and presentation today. I want to start by explaining how districts in Washington State are funded. And for North Thurston Public Schools, you'll notice on this pie chart that most of our funding comes from the state. 55% of the funds that make up our operating budget come from the state. We apply for and are awarded state grants for um, offering additional programs, categorical funding, and that makes up another 17.25% of our budget. Our levy is 17.35% of our budget, and then we apply and receive 
both competitive and allocation grants from the federal government at 7.9%. And then the smallest percentage of our budget, 2.5 is, is local uh, collections for things such as renting school facilities. So what um, is proposed to be on the ballot in February? The first is a replacement of the four-year educational programs and operations levy. And the second is a four-year capital levy for safety, technology, and facility improvements. So the EP&O levy, I'm sorry, we always use abbreviations, the Educational Programs and Operations Levy, also known as the EP&O levy, funds several programs across the entire school district, mental health support, nutrition, special education, transportation, nursing, arts, and athletics, just to name a few of those buckets. When you think about an individual dollar that's contributed to the school district through, through um, a collection, $1.60 of that dollar goes for basic education enhancements. And I'll go into more details in just a few slides, but um, as an example, uh, would provide funding to hire specialists and um, staff elective classes for enrichment programs, such as our highly capable program, where the state provides a certain amount of funding, but not enough funding to provide highly capable programming K-12, as well as student support services across the entire school district. Um, for special education services, 20 cents of the local levy dollar um, goes towards special education. Also, 15 cents goes towards operations for things like covering the cost of fuel for transportation. And then five cents on every dollar goes for extracurricular programs such as art, drama, music, sports. We receive no state funding for any of those those extracurricular um, athletics and activity programs. So the EPNO levy is a replacement levy. It's not a new tax, but it will continue to fund important programs such as science, technology, engineering and math, education, and career and technical education. Courses that help our students prepare to be college and career ready at graduation. And in Thurston County, all school districts will be going back to voters to ask for support for their EPNO levy. We're on a four-year cycle for our EPNO levy. So our school counselors provide support to all students in school, but we have some students that have more acute mental health needs and they are referred from the school counselor to a mental health specialist who is either a licensed clinical social worker or licensed mental health counselor. Um, they serve students across our entire school district. We do have more staffing at the high school and middle level than at the elementary level. And we also partner with outside agencies that provide counseling support to you. In the area of nutrition, we serve nutritious meals every day to our students. In fact, about 2,000 breakfasts are served daily in our district and over 7,000 lunches. The local levy makes up the difference between the cost of operations, both for staff and supplies that we use to, um, to feed our students. Transportation, we provide safe and efficient student transportation in a caring and positive environment. And the costs of supplies, as, such as fuel costs, as I mentioned, and staff, such as paraeducators who would also maybe ride a bus to provide support for the bus driver, those costs are funded through the local levy. So we do receive state funding, but it doesn't cover all of our costs. And um, as I mentioned, the state does not provide any funding for activities or athletics. These programs are so important to our students and are directly aligned with our strategic plan goal of every student connected to a pro-social activity. We know that when students are connected to their peers and their school community, they do better academically and socially. Arts education, we offer a robust arts and music opportunities, K-12, elementary, middle, and high school. Our strings and bands program begin in elementary and continue through middle and high school. 
And not only do students learn the skill of playing an instrument, they also learn how to be a productive member of a group. They participate in performances outside of the regular school day. Our high school students engage in two significant theater productions per year in the fall and spring, and they're learning skills that contribute to their success both in school and life. So the state funds, uh, the, provides funding for physical, social, and emotional support for staff. What this chart shows is that while the state funds 63.6 full-time equivalent staff members, we actually employ 126 to meet the needs of our students. I wanna give you a couple more examples. In terms of nursing, this, um, we have students who come to us who have healthcare plans. And in order for them to attend school, we need to provide support for implementing their health care plan. And it just happens during uh, the regular school day. And um, these students would not be able to attend school safely without having nursing services provided at the school site. So the state funds 13.95 nurses for our district and, and uh, we employ 22 nurses. Another example is the state funding for school psychologists. So you may know that school psychologists have expertise in mental health, learning, and behavioral support to help children and youth succeed, both academically and socially. And they partner with families and staff to provide this support for students. They're an essential member of our team and serve about 17% of our student population. So the state funds 7.2 school psychologists, but we employ 23.4. We have students who qualify for special education services and um, an individual education plan is developed for those students. And some of those plans include services that come at additional cost. So for an example, a student may require a paraeducator as part of their attendance at school to help them be successful. And the local levy makes up for the difference in special education funding for what the state provides us and what it actually costs. We really strive to be efficient with delivering services to our students, yet what students need is the priority. So what you see on this chart is that the local uh, levy funds 13.7 million towards special education services for our students. So the second ballot measure is a capital levy for safety, technology, and facility improvements. And the items on this list were identified by a Citizens Facility Advisory Committee. The Facility Advisory Committee, which is chaired by um, Troy Oliver, meets regularly throughout a regular school year and reports its findings to the Board of Directors. So first, I want to explain what a capital levy is. A capital levy is a funding structure to pay for large cost items that have a longer lifespan than a supply that is just going to be used up. So one way to think about a capital levy is as a homeowner, um, your regular monthly um, budget may not be able to accommodate the expense of putting a brand new roof on your house. So you may have to access um, a home equity line of credit. A capital levy can be, think, can be thought of in that way. It is a funding structure to pay for large ticket items. And our neighboring districts, Olympia and Tumwater also run capital levies. So I'm gonna cover some of the highlights on safety, technology, facility improvements, preschool programs, and food nutrition. So in the area of safety, the district conducted a safety analysis a couple of years ago, and we've been working to address those identified needs to strengthen and maintain school safety. Um, this capital levy will pay to upgrade our security video system, as well as replace old security cameras. It will also replace an, an out-of-date 
fire alarm system at Seven Oaks and Meadows Elementary and will improve um, sites for parent drop-off and pickup at Mountain View, Seven Oaks, Woodland, and Lydia Hawk Elementaries. One of the things that the safety study re revealed to us is that a lot of injuries um, actually occur in parking lots, and we have some very congested sites that need to be improved to ensure safety of students. In the area of technology, you probably know that North Thurston Public Schools has a one-to-one -one Chromebook to student ratio. So our refresh occurs approximately once every four years. So as an example, when a ninth grade student enrolls in high school, they are provided a Chromebook and they keep that Chromebook through graduation. Um, we collect it at graduation. And even though the lifespan of a Chromebook may be considered technically used up, we do continue to use those um, throughout the district um, to extend their life to almost six years. Wi-Fi is absolutely essential for Chromebook usage um, throughout all of our facilities. We need to upgrade our Wi-Fi access spots. And we also have, in some schools, areas that are considered dead spots where you cannot get on, on the internet. We're also looking to upgrade our and um, refresh old audio equipment in classrooms. Other classroom technologies, including um, projection systems, replacing those and replacing some reader boards in our district that have are at end of life. In terms of facility improvements, it's important to remember that we have, we have a lot of facilities. We have uh, 24 schools and maintaining the buildings is important to our community. Um, the capital levy is needed to replace some um, critical systems. So upgrading and replacing sewer systems at South Bay, Meadows, Olympic View, and Lydia Hawk. Replacing roofs at Lakes, Chinook, Nisqually, Lydia Hawk, some portables, as well as South Sound Stadium. Resurfacing the parking lot at Olympic View. Upgrading the building wall and siding at Chambers Prairie and then upgrading the boiler systems at Mountain View and Lakes Elementaries. Again, just to continue to protect the investment that has already been made in these buildings. In the area of preschool, North Thurston Public Schools has expanded preschool programming, yet we currently have more than 50% of students coming to kindergarten who have not had access to preschool programs. So the capital levy would fund the construction of preschool classrooms and family-friendly spaces for parent education classes. The location for the new construction is near Nisqually Middle School on a lot that is currently owned by the school district. Um, in North Thurston Public Schools, in the area of food and nutrition, we are looking to replace um, in several kitchens, the built-in coolers and freezers. These, uh, this equipment has reached its end of life. The cost of repairing these coolers and freezers exceeds the current value of them. We also need to replace dishwashers, again, to continue operations of those, you know, 7,500 meals that are served every day in our, in our schools, 9,000 actually, 500. So as we conclude the presentation, I want to share an update on the fact that our voters supported a bond in 2020 as a reminder, the difference between a bond and a capital levy is a bond is, is like taking out a, a home loan. You borrow the money up front and you pay it off over time. So the, the bond uh, highlights I'd like to share with you are for really large construction projects, such as the modernization of Camacho Middle School. It's nearing completion. If you've driven by the school, you can see what I'm, what I'm sharing. Um, this new, completely modernized school um, has resulted in a new secure entrance, a brand new library, a new expanded student commons, classroom wing, as well as upgraded play areas. Um, we hope to move into the last phase of the wing construction in December and um, we'll host an open house for the community in January. 
River Ridge's modernization is going to be phased um, as most of our large construction projects. We're in phase one right now and phase two will begin in a few months. Phase one is resulting in new locker rooms, a new weight room, new bleachers and lighting in the gym, an upgraded pool and a new community entrance, all opening later this fall. In phase two, we will begin construction on a new academic building. And that includes a large commons area, similar to what we have at North Thurston and, Tim and Timberline High School. And you can see a picture on the screen of what that's going to look like to accommodate those 1,400 you know, students that are on site at River Ridge. The modernization will also include a new theater, kitchen, music, and CTE classrooms. We also asked voters for support for schools that were more than 30 years old. Um, and we called these our warm and dry upgrades. So new roofs and HVAC systems at Horizons, Meadows, and Seven Oaks have been completed. So I wanna make sure that we take a few minutes to share the estimated costs of the proposed levies. The cost for the EP and O levy, again, this is a replacement levy of $2.50 per 1,000 of assessed value. That's the same um, amount that we asked voters for approval in 2020. So going back in February of 2024, the capital levy is estimated to cost 77 cents per 1,000 of assessed value. And this slide shows our total tax if approved by voters, the bond, was previously passed. So that's currently at $1.85 per thousand of assessed value. The capital levy would be 77 cents. The EP and O levy would be a replacement. So the total would be $5.12. And that's based on um, what I would describe as conservative assessed value growth of 3%. Our goal is to have maintain a predictable um, tax rate for taxpayers, for our staff, and for building uh, maintenance. So I want to explain a little bit about how tax rates work. Once voters approve a dollar amount, that dollar amount is the total amount that a district can uh, collect. So we have a little pretend school district here on this slide. The school district received approval from voters to collect $100 in, in a levy. Um, there are four houses in this school district. So each home uh, taxpayer pays $25 to the school district. And so that $100 uh, tax that's been approved by voters is the total amount that taxpayers are funding. In a growing district where there's a lot of new construction, when you add a house in that school district, the dollar amount that was approved by voters, the $100, that remains the same, even when there's growth in the district. So in this scenario, you see, once we add that additional home, each taxpayer pays $20 towards that $100 uh, total tax collection. So I just wanted to make sure that people understood that for school district taxes, the total dollar amount that is approved by voters is the total amount that's collected, even when assessed values go up within the district. So I wanna thank you for listening to the presentation. We're now going to um, participate in a Q and answer session. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and let's see here, there's my friends. And um, I'm gonna turn it over to Amy Blondin and hopefully all the participants can see all of the panelists at this time. All right, very good. So Amy, what our participants have? Sure, and again, hello everyone, I'm Amy Blondin. I am the communications director and we also have Heather Larson who is a director for finance and Troy Oliver, assistant superintendent for operations. Uh, the first question that we have is, how does the district decide what to include in a capital levy? Troy, do you want to take that one? Yeah, thank you, Amy. So um, as um, Deb mentioned in the presentation, we have, and I, and I help facilitate um, a district-wide facility advisory committee, which is composed of community members, 
um, staff um, and the like to include um, some board members and some uh, staff at the building level. We meet several times a year to review um, the district's capital facility needs. Um, last year, we met three different times looking at the needs um, for the district that are not covered by the current bond. And um, brought a recommendation as a result of that work throughout the course of last year to the school board um, last July and that the board asked, um, or that the, the FAC recommended to the board that the community that the uh, communities that the community was supporting the items that were outlined in the capital levy that Deb um, shared uh, just now. Great, thank you, Troy. The next question: uh, I remember in 2020 the ballot had a replacement EPNO levy and a bond. Why are we proposing a capital levy this time instead of a bond? Deb, do you want to take that one? Um, sure. So as Troy mentioned, we work with the facility advisory committee to review the needs in the district. And we actually annually update um, to the board of directors, I believe it's a requirement from Thurston County, um, a facility, six-year facility plan. And at this point, we're not rec the committee did not recommend to the board a uh, a major modernization of a facility. So the kinds of work that needs to happen in the district is within the scope of a capital levy. So that that's why we're recommending a capital levy to the board. Another question is around specifically around art specialists. Uh, they're wondering if the EPNO covers that position and how do we currently staff art specialists in our district? Does each school have one, et cetera? Yeah, Troy, do you wanna answer the, the specialist staffing? Yeah, so we have specialists um, in each one of our elementary schools. They are covered um, by the um, EPNO levy. It is a supplement beyond what the state funds. Um, we've been going through a process in the last few years to um, staff our specialists to match the number of students um, in a school, a number of classrooms in a school, and match that up for one for one for one, um, so we don't have additional specialist staffing in a school that's beyond the need of the school. Uh, one of the things that we're currently doing is we've um, some of our schools have have um, the need for less staffing than other schools based upon the size of the school, is to make sure there's equitable access. Um, throughout the grade levels for all those specialists. And we've learned recently that there may be a couple instances um, in some of our schools where we need to go back and review and make sure that students are receiving specialist opportunities um, in all four of those areas. So we're in the process of doing that um, in a couple of cases that we're aware of. Great, thank you for that. Um, could you please repeat the difference or reiterate the difference between a bond and a levy? Deb, do you want to? Take that one. Sure, I can, and Heather can jump in if it's um, helpful. Um, a bond, you get a large amount of money up front for really big projects. So, like River Ridge High School is a significant project that a levy, the money kind of trickles in over a four year period of time. So, you get a smaller amount each year. Whereas a bond, you borrow the money, so you borrow a large dollar amount that funds a big project. And then you pay it off. Typically, a bond is paid off over 20 years. So, Heather, anything else that you could add? Sure. Um, a lot of times, too, we like to say that bonds are for buildings. So if we're going to be building any new buildings or a complete remodel, and then our levies are really for learning and then your day-to-day -day operations and maintenance. Great. Thank you both. Mm -hmm. When was the last time North Thurston Public Schools had a capital levy? And how long did that funding last? Do we have any historians on the panel today who know the answer to that? It's It's been a we'll while. Probably have to look that up and, and put yeah. that out. We're building out a web page that will have um, frequently asked questions. So we'll have to, we'll have to look that one up. Thanks. Okay. Um, I think this one would be for Heather. If property values go up, does that mean the school district will collect more money than it expected to collect? 
No. Um, in fact, a levy is approved for a specific dollar amount. So as a school district, we cannot collect more money, more money than what the voters had originally approved. Okay. And Heather, another question for you. Why, why do we need more funding than what the state gives us for basic education? So while state funding does cover many components of basic education, including our staff and materials and supplies, it doesn't cover the full cost of everything. So including like Deb, Deb mentioned special education, um, our mental health specialists, counselors, social workers, school nurses, and many of the important needs of our students. These proposed levies will help fund, fund many of the important needs related to safety, technology, instruction, arts and athletics, and just general student support. So including like the one-to-one -one devices for our students, their Chromebooks and all the technology that's needed within the infrastructure of our buildings to make that happen. Okay, we have a question about a specific school, which is, are there any plans to modernize Olympic View Elementary? Um, does someone want to talk a little bit about the 30 year cycle and how that? Yeah, so the way that the district has traditionally addressed um, aging facilities, you know, we, we need to actually reinvest before a modernization happens. So um, for Olympic View, the Olympic View isn't old enough yet, although we recognize there are things that do need to be replaced. And in fact, I think a couple of years ago, we put in a whole new floor for all of the hallways. And um, on the list of the capital levy includes improved um, an improved parking lot and drop off and pick up at Olympic View. So we really try to um, assess the state of our facilities, do as much maintenance to not have things become too expensive, but a major modernization won't happen until we qualify for the school construction assistance program. And that is a 30 year life cycle between major modernizations. Thank you. Do we still have federal emergency pandemic funding and is any of this levy funding meant to replace that? Heather, I see you coming off mute. <laughs> yeah, I can answer that question, you bet. So we do, it's called ESSER dollars and we do have some funds remaining. Um, these funds were dedicated to learning recovery from the pandemic and the, the remaining dollars will actually be slotted towards our next year's summer scholars program. And then once that is done, the funds will be fully expended by the fall of 2024. And there, there is no plan for from the federal government to have those replaced. Thank you. Just, I just oh, want to share, like, we, the, we've been so grateful to have the funding to offer a free summer program. Prior to having those ESSER funds, we did offer a summer program, but it was a fee-based option, mostly for high school students. So um, I anticipate we'll go back to that funding structure. Just a reminder to folks, you can enter your your questions in the Q&A and we'll continue running through these. Um, how much, we did touch on this in the presentation, but how much will this proposed um, measure cost, cost me, Heather? Yeah, you bet, I can take this one as well. So the, the total rate that we are requesting is the $5.12 that was on the slide and that's per thousand of assessed property value. So 250 of it is for the EPNO levy, and that's just a replacement levy. Um, and the 77 cents is for the capital levy, which is um, slotted to be used for like safety, technology, and facility improvements. And then we have our bond that was previously approved um, back in 2020 by voters, and that is now sitting at $1.85. So it's a total rate per thousand, and it's determined by the property assessed values. Um, and as a district, we are conservative in our assessed value growth projections. I think Deb mentioned this in the presentation, and we use about 3% for the value growth each year. Um, and with all of the new construction in our district, it is possible that the rate will actually be less than what we're proposing to voters. Thank you. Yeah. Deb, why is this needed now? now why is now the right time to propose these measures? I think that um, for our students, our, our staff, and for our community, in order for us to maintain 
the current level of service, um, we have to go back to our community and ask for their continued support. So the EPO levy, without the renewal, it would sunset. And I think there was a chart where I showed the state funds like 63 staff members and we have 126. We wouldn't be able to afford to keep 126 people employed to deliver those services if the EPO levy wasn't renewed. And the capital levy, um, it just, it costs money to maintain our facilities. When I think about like South Bay Elementary School needs the sewer system to be replaced. Um, that's an essential service for us to provide a, at a school site. And like with technology, um, technology, the per unit cost of technology has gone down, but having access all day, every day, <laughs> to technology whenever the um, teacher uh, needs it. I was just at Olympic View this morning and um, the students were transitioning. We had students throughout the classroom doing different activities and many students that um, even in second grade are working independently on a Chromebook, accessing um, the, the um, instructional support that the teacher has chosen. And um, that's just a part of school today. And it's a part of all of our lives, technology, but it, it does come at a cost in order for us to ensure that the students have the latest technology to access those programs and that it's working properly. It, it has a cost, so we have to replace technology. Thank you. All right, I think this might be one for you. Uh, for schools that don't have lockers, is there a plan to use any funding to install lockers? So at our middle schools, we made a decision a number of years ago, probably 20 some years ago in this district to um, eliminate lockers from our, from our middle school programs. Part of the biggest part of that is really around student safety. Um, we do know that there are um, some students that um, maybe have a heavy backpack or a heavy load. And we've asked um, parents and students to work with schools to be creative about how to manage that situation. Sometimes it's because of a musical instrument or something like that to where we can provide um, places for students to store stuff during the student day so that's not a burden. But the primary reason we went away from lockers is really around student safety issues um, and efficiency in, in the schools. Thank you. I think this is a Deb question. If these levies pass, will you expand the services you were talking about like nursing and counseling or is this to maintain existing services? It's really intended to maintain existing services. I think over the last few years, we have definitely heard from um, families and from community the need to strengthen student support services. And so when I look at um, where has there been the growth in the school district for additional services, it has been in that area. So counseling services and support, um, it, individual, uh, you know, meeting the needs of individual students. Um, I think we're always prioritizing that as well as trying to really ensure that we are um, strong partners with other community-based organizations that can meet the need. As a school district, you know, the education of our students, both academic and social emotionally, is our responsibility, yet um, we're not funded to do everything. And so we really do rely on those strong partnerships with organizations like Community Youth Services that can provide support um, to students and families as well. Thank you. We have a, another funding question, Heather. Um, what's the total expected amount to be collected for each levy, not the rate, but the total? Sorry about that. I thought I unmuted, but it wasn't. Um, so in 2024, if if the board does um, accept the proposal, we will be asking for um, 52.4 million, I believe, for the um, EPNO levy. And then the capital levy is 18.1 million. Um, let's see. Can you share more about what mental health positions do for students? Roy, do you want to take that one? Yeah, I'd be happy to. Thanks, Amy. Yeah, we do have mental health um, specialists assigned to each of our schools. Um, these are professionals are either um, licensed mental health counselors or licensed um, clinical social workers. 
and they provide mental health support and crisis interventions to students that are referred by the building, the school counselor. So a student in crisis, start with the school counselor and um, then can be referred to our, our mental health um, support interventionists. In addition to that, um, our mental, mental health um, staff provide preventative education on mental health to our students, um, facilitate um, small group sessions. They also work one-on-one -on -one with students um, in need of short-term mental health support. Um, if those needs are long-term, they can connect students and families to community resources for those additional supports. Um, and then may um, are able to respond to a mental health crisis that may arise in the school in, in a given moment. Um, and we've also have a structure in place to where um, if we have a specific situation in school that requires additional help, we can deploy multiple mental health people to, to rise to meet that need in, in the individual school for that specific situation. Great, thank you. I just wanted to add, I know this wasn't the specific question, but I wanted to um, just share that in our school district, our board um, made a board determination to really work to remove the stigma associated with students seeking help for mental health and um, been really proud as a school system that we've had the community support and have I, they've identified it as a priority as well for us to be able to help students in need and um, treat mental health uh, needs the same way we treat physical health needs of our students. Great point. All right, we have another safety question, which is how specifically does this money help us maintain safety and security in our schools? Yeah, so the, the funds that would be generated by the capital levy, um, we, we're continually looking at, at student safety, um, staff safety throughout our district. So um, one of the areas that Deb mentioned earlier in the presentation is parking lots, improving parking lots, separating um, student um, and their in with pickup traffic from our buses. That's a, one of the primary places where actually student injuries happen more so than anything else in, in, in our public schools. Um, so really looking at the um, parking lots, also cameras, technology is ever changing. Cameras are ever improving. Um, having cameras on our campuses to make sure that we know what's going on um, as a preventative measure, as well as um, if something does happen, we can go back and, and review that. And then the secure entrances, making sure that um, our uh, entrances to our schools are secure and we can make sure we know who's coming into our schools to be part of our campus. And then another thing we've do done um, is fencing. Look at places where we can increase fencing to increase safety. Uh, if you drive down College Street, you can, will notice that we um, added fencing along the entire property line along College Street for Mountain View Elementary School, which is an important thing um, for, our, for our students as, as that is a busy street. So we're continually doing that. The capital levy and the resources um, that that provides allows us to continue doing that work and do more of it as we go forward. Hi. We have a question that I'm not I'm not sure there's an easy answer to, but it was asked, so I will pose it, which is why why doesn't the state fully fund student and facility needs so that districts don't have to ask the for additional funding? I think um that has been an ongoing conversation in the state of Washington. And um I think uh just recently um there was a Supreme Court decision that um really uh, came down with a, a recognition that based on the state's constitution, that it is a shared responsibility between the local um, taxpayers and, and then also what we pay into the state that the state then redistributes uh, to school districts. So um, at least on the capital side, it, it's considered a shared responsibility. Okay, thank you. Those are all the questions that we have received that I see. So um, Deb, at this point, I can turn it back over to you for any closing thoughts. Okay, well, again, thank you for joining us today. Um, this was a lot of information and I know we moved through the presentation pretty quickly, but um, our board will be considering these uh, proposed levies at their meeting on Tuesday. And then um, once the board ap approves uh, the 
the uh, resolutions for both of these levies, we will actually be building out a lot of communication and additional information. So you can watch for that. Um, there is a website that's going to be created that you'll be able to go to the main page in our website and just click a button. It'll take you to additional information. And we'll be out in the community sharing information about you know, why this funding is needed, um, what is the purpose of it, and be as clear in our, our answers as, as we are able to be. So if, if you have a question you can, um, that didn't get answered today, um, or it comes to you later, you can just reach out to my office and we'll make sure that, that we get a response back to you. Um, again, thank you for attending and um, have a great rainy <laughs> uh, Wednesday afternoon. Take good care. Bye-bye.